Hello everyone, welcome to ToffeeTube. My name is Toffee and today on ToffeeTube we're going to be discussing the worst looks of the 2022 can red carpet. I've already made a four parts review of some looks which had something to say. If you still haven't watched, feel free to check these out on my channel. Put the link in the description and also the card section. As we are fed with the puff evening gowns and high heels, there were also many sheer dresses and column gowns which were so successful in their representation. But on the other hand, there were lots of looks that absolutely were a flop. By saying the worst, I mean the worst in some cases like missing the mark in the design part of the style that is not appropriate for such red carpet like can. All the clothes that are mentioned as a wrong choice in this video maybe, I said maybe, be strong and spot on on other red carpets. I said maybe because also some of them are not acceptable on any red carpet. Please stay and watch the video till the end. Also make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads. To be honest, I'm really tired of the hot pink color. Let's appreciate Jean Cadieu wearing a look from Louis V Fall Winter 2022. But there are some serious issues here. Personally, I have a problem with someone wearing the same style from a brand's collection head to toe without any changes. There must be some creativity. It takes a little effort to depict some vigor, some innovation, you know? If there is no stylist to do such a thing, it's not that hard to DIY. It's really simple and unattractive. Thanks for grabbing a blue clutch, but that really didn't help. Besides, the whole look is so questionable for can red carpet. Ah, don't open that door. The shaped lips on the bodies give the feeling like, yes, come to me, babe. Okay, I'm coming, but do you have any idea where are we? No. No? No. Are you sure? No. The exaggerated metallic bell sandals made them look sloppier. The clutch for me is a reminiscent of a washcloth. Is confusing and not matched with the dress. I wish she created a little balance with her look. Although this look of Agatha Russell is doing its best to represent the chicness, it is a serious flop. There is no logic or artistic basis for such a design. I'm really wondering how Louis Vuitton can bring the best out of a look and on the other hand, how miss the mark on some occasions. The color combination is boring and the division part between the upper and down part of the dress with an oblique cut is not digestible. The buttons on the side are questionable, the cape is not helping, and overall, it's not something remarkable among other eye-catching looks this year. Berenice Bejo showed up with a look that perfectly describes the concept of wrong place and wrong choice. Let's disregard the fitting problems. This catsuit could go perfectly on another one's body with a different shape and height. But since they had emphasized putting this on Berenice, at least they could do some efforts to change the length of the pants to prevent her from seeming, oh my god, why am I covered in this metallic thing? Or if you're again emphasizing the length of the pants, then at least you could try on another pair of pumps with higher heels. I mean, this cat suit really, really demands high heel sandals. The red pumps literally stole the spotlight and kind of took the beauty out of the cat suit. As you're listening to me, you see I say cat suit. Not the swag cat suit with girlish, squishy, puffy skirt attached to it. The more I look at it, the more I wonder how did it end up looking like this. Were they supposed to be like tea drops or they're intentionally shaped with a rubber band? Is the bow presenting a style or is it just hanging there to prevent the waistline from seeming simple? Why does the waistline's color band remind me of the wrapped ribbons around the gift? Is this look trying to send a feminine masculine message? Were they thinking that now they designed the catsuit but it's not puffy so let's make it puffy in any case? Why the pumps are not digestible? Even by the matching color with the skirt? <sighs> there are so many questions. With respect to Michelle Williams being pregnant, this dress also was a flop. A wrong choice for a can red carpet. No one expect her to wear tight and uncomfortable gowns, but at least she could choose a style with an elegant look. The floral texture is not eye-catching. Although it's Chanel and expensive, it seems cheap and ordinary. The art cut fabric attached to the hemline with its teeny tiny fringes was not necessary and just made the gown look extra and over-designed. This one is such a look that could be proper for another place but really fell through the can red carpets. Before I talk about Maggie Gyllenhaal's style, let me remind you of her recent look at the 2022 Oscars in a dress from the Scaparelli Haute Couture collection. This is proof of two points. 
One, that Maggie doesn't have a bad taste in choosing clothes. And two, is that she hasn't revealed bad looks over the years. Now the question is why she wore such an ensemble in Cannes this year. A sheer top and a gold skirt with fringes at the bottom. They really don't well match together. Maybe the color combination is acceptable, but still, it's not giving the vibe. Or maybe I personally expected more from Maggie. The braided belt made it extra. It's beautiful, but too much for this look. It's so complicated, because when you delete this item from the look, it seems like something is really needed to complete it. But when you see the belt used for completing the style, it's not satisfying. And the reason is sheer top. The sheer unpurposely hung over the skirt and made the look seem sloppy. That's why it steals the spotlight of any belt you're gonna use in your look. The skirt is nice, it could well sync with a matching top, but unfortunately didn't. If you're looking for a style to answer the question of what kind of clothes can make you look short, here is Iris Law wearing a bustier and skirt, you're welcome. When you look at it from a distance, it is as if the body straps are attached to the skirt and they are doing their best to hold the skirt and not let it fall to the ground. When she posed, I felt like the skirt is falling. When she walked, I was afraid the skirt might fall. Why you do this to us? We're supposed to look at the clothes and enjoy watching them, not to stress us out and to give us the feeling that something is gonna fall down anytime and reveal some stuff if you know what I mean. The corset bustier alone is nice but it has no power to hide the imperfections of the whole look. Among all the puffy and sheer gowns from all the great silhouettes that we saw during the cam red carpet this year, this look has nothing to present against them. Although the corset is fine and the color is the right choice. After Leonie Hanna presented two strong looks, this one literally gave me a heart attack. A bodysuit with an attached skirt confusing us at its finest. Both pieces are well designed. The color and embellishments are eye-catching, but I really don't get what did happen that they thought they had to join these two together. Not in the can, nor no other place this look is elegant. It kind of washed away the previous successful looks. Although she seems really happy wearing it, it completely missed the mark. Rebecca Hall is one of the actors whom I'm not personally interested in her taste in clothing style. This year, I didn't like her opening red carpet look, nor any of her other ones, but the worst one among all was this polka dot suit. Although the suit finishing and fitting are perfect, the green feather sleeves are too much and distracting. This feather featured look may be occasional in a Christmas celebration party to remind the Grinch, but I'm really not gonna accept Grinch vibes to can. It's unbelievable that the total look 180 degrees changes to perfection when you delete these feathers from the style. The next one who wore a dress that can't be anticipated to be presented on can red carpet is Claire Holt. Before talking about this look, let's clarify a difference between the can red carpet and the photo calls. On the red carpet, we mostly expect to see formal gowns in the most glamorous way, while the photo calls, which are technically held to present the movies and photo shooting the cast, might digest some casual looks. That's why it's not surprising to see Anna Thaway or Marion Cotillard dazzling with mini dresses in the photo call events. While the informal dresses are acceptable here, it's really not elegant to show up with a mini dress on the can red carpet. Claire Holt wore a glittering mini dress and completed it with a pink cape to make it look dramatic. But that's not helping. That's wrong. The mini dress kinda seems it should have been worn at an after party celebration, a birthday party, or some unofficial occasion. And the cape also seems like it's attached to the wrong dress. The efforts to make this style look elegant are admissible, yet not acceptable. There is no affirmation out there to look more stylish by more skin revealing. This is what Didi Stone did. The looks on can red carpet demand presenting formal styles and modesty. Don't get me wrong. By modesty, I'm not claiming there shouldn't be any sheer dresses or skin showing. As you know me, I always emphasize the balance. So if you're going to have a skin revealing look, at least do your best. This one is hardly digestible for such a red carpet like the Met Gala. The different size gold flowers attached over the crossing lines are mishmash. The skirt also seems like needs to be ironed. Overall, it's obvious they did their best to make a shimmering style, but failed it twice, both bodies and bottom. Well, that's it for today. I'd be so glad to know what is your opinion. Which looks do you think were the worst among others? Please let me know in the comments. Stay notified for future uploads. So don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to see more content like this. So, see you soon.